hate it. <laughs> This is the XS12, Benetton's introduction to the Catran market. A comfortable charter or a dedicated passage maker? Let's have a look. So let's take a look at the XS12. Well, obviously what we can see here is the open helms. This is the big selling point of this boat. The helm seats are luxurious in look and in feel, and you get the real outboard racing sensation. In our little random test, it took 20 seconds to fold the seat into its upright and stowed position, although I did manage to catch my thumb. Visibility from the helm is good, and despite my initial reservations, I could see all four corners of the boat from these positions. Similarly, the instruments are clear and easy to see from this vantage point. The lines all run aft and are tailed onto only two winches and these are stowed in line bags. Now let's hear our thoughts on the day. So the things we always look at from a helm position, um, can you see all four corners of the boat? Yes you can. So that, that's good. This, um, which is obviously probably an optional tent on the side, it does, you know, this is, you know, this is what? Inch and a half, stainless steel, bar there, you cannot you, you, you know that that's gonna make you feel quite secure mm -hmm. so as, as protected helm positions go it is protected is it pretty no it's ugly it, it really is an ugly system um, but for the point of view of you know where you are I feel quite safe now let's look at how easy it is to work the deck we always do handrails there's a handrail there yep Which is good. after that you're moving on to gutters uh, for handholds these actually are quite substantial. You could actually get your fingers under there, so although it's yeah. a gutter, um, it's, it's quite substantial. Yeah, it is like, it, it curves back on itself, so you can like, really get a good hold. One thing that does confuse me a little bit is that these, I don't know why, that the stanchions are so inboard of the hull. You're losing, you're losing you know, you could have moved those out six inches. So the design of the boat has the stanchions inboard by six inches. Also, some of the hatches are flush and recessed and some aren't. No, quite sure why they've done this. Anyway, let's listen to our thoughts on the day again. Small trampoline, you've obviously got access to storage and plant machinery there, so generator set. So having looked at the um, gooseneck, it is, it's quite a flimsy gooseneck. I wouldn't want to jive this boat hard. But I don't actually think the mainsail area is particularly huge for this. As I said, this is but this boat is built for charter. That's that's what it's there for. Elsewhere, we found that access to the coach roof was not particularly easy, as Teresa is going to demonstrate. That's absurd. You wouldn't want to do it in a big sea, would you? I wouldn't want to do it in any sea. It's like hard enough just when like the boat's rocking a little bit at anchor. All right. Well, anyways. Nice little seating area. Then. How do I get down? Yeah, it's. Uh, you that, wouldn't, you wouldn't that, want to do that in heavy weather, would you? That's not good. I'm not impressed with that at all. So the life raft position is good, but how are we going to score this? We're going to give this a 6 out of 10. We are still not sold on those outboard helm stations. Access to the coach roof is difficult and the hatches are tripping hazardous in places. So first things first with this category is to climb into the engine bay and have a good look around, see how easy access is and how well it is thought out. Let's hear our thoughts on the day. So we have self-expanding foam, that's good. Dedicated battery box, that's good. So good solid rose joint there. Spectral lines, now I have no problem with spectral lines, but you know, that's good. So the steering mechanism is good and robust. A well laid out engine compartment, no real complaints here. There's good access to the filtration systems. Although looking at that alternator, I wonder how easy it would be to change that belt. Internally, the fit out was basic and the joinery not the best finish. Let's hear again our thoughts on the day. Yeah, so yeah, I don't obviously want to offend the dealer by talking about it. It looks really flimsy. Like if you compare this to say Lagoon, which is the other kind of, it, like the, the finish on this is really, it does look budget, like super budget. Um, what I'll do is I'll point out lots of different things that I think are super budget. 
Um, but it's built to a price point. But there's little things. There's not a lot of attention to detail or care that's been taken on just the fit out. It's fitted out really well. It's not like it's falling apart like some brands or, but, and you know, and looking at things like Mastic, um, the way the Mastic is, it's, it's been put together yeah. well. Yeah. But it's just the ingredients that they put into it yeah. don't seem particularly well you know, it, they're cheap, they, they look cheap. And it's things like light fittings, fans, the wood finishes. Mm. But um, yeah, let's have a look and see what else we can see. Yeah, this, mm -hmm. the edging there. But these switches look fairly flimsy. The quality and thickness of the veneers around the boat wasn't particularly high, although I did like how the drawers are put together and the finish and robustness of this seemed to be quite good. So a plus there. I did, however, really take objection to the quality of these work surfaces. There is no need for them. A bit of Corian would have been easy to provide. So for build quality, we're going to award this a 6 out of 10. Let's kick things off with a look at the cockpit. This cockpit is really fantastic for a 38 foot catamaran. It's really spacious, plenty of seating options. And we did have something to say about it on the day. It was very complimentary, but the audio was pretty terrible. It was extremely windy. So I'll spare you that and you'll have to put up with my voiceover. You've got a great dining area. You've got plenty of other alternative seating options, such as the helm positions themselves. And there's also some space just in front of the winches there so lots of things to like about this cockpit not much to dislike we were happy the cockpit communicates really well with the inside of the xs12 your first impression as you walk through that sliding door is definitely one of space and light so let's take a look and see what i had to say on the day so this is the saloon area obviously and this is a really nice a uh, spacious, very light fueled area. It's, it's very pleasant. Um, it's small obviously, but this is a 38 foot catamaran. So for that size, it's, it's very spacious. And honestly, for two people, like we would not need any more space than this in terms of internal volume. This is absolutely fine. Um, good ventilation. I think you know by now that ventilation is like my thing. I get really <laughs> passionate about ventilation, all things ventilation. Um, good two big opening hatches behind me there and these huge windows but like the lagoon the, it, this is shaped very similarly to the lagoon there's no opening hatches above and I think that's a bit of that could be taken as a positive or a negative because on the one hand I think that it would keep the saloon cooler having these kind of vertical windows you'd only get the Sun actually coming through the windows when the Sun's low in the sky when it's high overhead you wouldn't get the Sun directly coming into the boat so I think that would keep the boat cool um, but on the other hand, while you're underway, you can't really see the sails. You can see the, the head sail, but you can't see the main sail. So if you're keeping watch down here during the day or overnight, you couldn't uh, keep an eye on your main sail. Um, other than that, there is the galley. Shall we go to the galley? Here we are. <laughs> and uh, I mean, this is a very basic galley. And I think that we can agree that the finish is not um, amazing, but it's functional it's small just a l-shaped galley um, just the one sink and just the smaller stove as well with a small oven and I think we've discussed this before it's not ideal to have your stove next to the steps because you can imagine if you're cooking here then either you know the, there is the potential to kind of fall down the steps a little bit so not ideal but it is a small boat so that's just the way things are sometimes so the question for the viewers is so obviously this is now trying to take it's it's in uh competition yeah with lagoon fontaine so. yeah and um probably the uh, naughty tech and leopard. So, and leopard so all of the entry level catamarans all the production level the production catamarans um, this is in competition with I feel like this is most similar to Lagoon in terms of the styling in terms of the shape in terms of the the amount of interior volume so I think the people who like Lagoons will probably like this I personally prefer the Lagoon myself. I think the Lagoon is much better finished I think the finish of the Lagoon is is far superior um, myself uh, and the leopard, I think this, I mean, you know, obviously. We've not been on board the leopard 40 yet, so let's withhold no, judgment. No, the, the finish is the same on the 44, the 40, you know, this is the poorest finish. It's like, it's not like the, it's terrible. The, the most basic finish. But it, it's, it does, like these um, corners are, are solid wood, so they have protected the corners, which is better than what Fontaine Fajoli Things do. like this, this is just yeah, this, is that, this is not fantastic. Just a in there would have taken nothing. 
Exactly, it's just plastic and you know Lagoon have Corian bench tops, um, you know here like there's no, like this is chipping already, this veneer, just there there's like a little chip in it and this is, this is a brand new boat so um, there shouldn't be any chips at all. There's also a forward facing nav station which I do really like, so uh, it doesn't have a dedicated seat but you could just sit at the saloon, you could just sit here, I mean not easily, <laughs> it's a bit far away. But you know there is the the board facing nav station, so that is good. Uh, but apart from that, I mean, look, it's a very. If I went on a charter holiday, or if I was buying kind of an entry level catamaran, a forty foot catamaran for time in the Caribbean, or time in the Bahamas, or time in Europe, then this is perfect. That you know, this is. Uh, very similar to other 40 foot production style catamarans, except that it's got the open helm, which I'm a little bit curious about because I don't feel like the rest of the boat's particularly aerodynamic. Aerodynamic? Yeah. Yeah, aerodynamic. Um, but it's the like a performance cruiser. Yeah, but the open helm kind of suggests that it's a performance cruiser, but it's not shaped like a performance cruiser. So It's like putting a spoiler on a, on a bathtub. Yeah, so it's kind of curious. I don't actually mind the helms. I think that they're particularly well enclosed. They That um, enclosure that they've built for this boat uh, is really good. Actually, it gives me an idea of what could be done for other open helm catamarans because this is definitely the best um, open helm enclosure that I've seen. Nautitech just have like the little flimsy biminis and Katana don't bother with anything at all as far as I know. So that is that is really good and the seats are very comfortable. So, you know, the open helms for open helms are, are good. So this uh, staircase at least has something to hold on to, it's got a, um, a handle, the other one on the other side doesn't, so it feels a bit safer going down here. It is a little bit bumpy in the marina today, so that's actually quite a good thing. Okay, yeah, it gives you a good idea of... Uh... Of what it might be like underway. So they have put in some, some good features, so there is there are three opening hatches, which is a really good thing as far as I'm concerned, and it's not, uh, it is kind of a part island berth, so you do, you can get to one side of the, the berth like so. Um, so that is easier to make the bed and to get you know in amongst everything. They've got a power supply here, a little bench um, or a desk or something. So and oh I can stand up. So yep. that's good. So don't forget this is only a 38 foot boat. Yeah. And so they have crammed a lot of volume in here. Yeah. I just I, I yeah my thoughts are that they it's, it's not as good as the finish on on any of the other production cans. You're right. Like look at you know like just just this. Like there's nothing particularly thoughtful. Whoopsie. Thoughtful about that. So these light switches are you know very basic. Um, you know the, the, this empty cupboard space is just very basic. Um, again, I can feel when I run my fingers along there that that's rough. So that's obviously been scuffed a little bit. And the fore cabin is actually huge, like there's a huge amount of headroom here, it's really really high. So the freeboard must be pretty impressive on this boat. Um, it's definitely not a cramped room, which is really good, or cabin. And again, good ventilation, you've got two opening hatches, one above and one to the side, and you've also got access to what I'm assuming is like a locker. This particular model was a four cabin version so unfortunately we didn't get a chance to look at what excess do with an owner's hull and how that might differ in terms of the shower room and the heads to the guest hull but let's take a look at the guest hull heads and shower room now as you can see again very very basic design certainly functional i mean you've got the heads there you've got a separate shower stall but there's no real love or beauty you can just see there's that molded sink there there's nothing special going on here, but again, perfectly functional. Overall, I'm going to give the interior design a five out of 10. There's no love or beauty in this design. It's purely functional. And frankly, for a liverboard, that's not good enough for me. So let's look at some performance and statistics for the Beneteau XS12 catamaran. The length of the boat is 11.73 meters. Now bear in mind, this is the same hull as the Lagoon 40. So it's identical in almost every respect. Beam 6 meters 73, the draft is 1.35 stub keels and they are unskegged. Main sail area 50 square meters for the main and Genoa 32 square meters. Again, it is identical to the Lagoon 40. It uses the same hulls. 
For this reason, the performance diagram that we can get from this is the same as the Lagoon 40. With those big wide hulls and lack of dagger boards, the boat is not going to point high. But off the wind, she will fly. We were beaten hands down on a five-day passage of Bermuda with the wind off the aft quarter. These boats in the right conditions do perform. But she's no Outremer or Sea Wind, so we are going to score the XS12 3 out of 10. In this final category, we are assessing value for money of the XS12. Now, the base price of this is 311,000 euros. That is 342,000 US dollars and 274,000 British pounds. Fully spectre, a specification that we would want to take offshore. We are looking at adding another 100,000 to this value. Now, the obvious comparison here is between the Lagoon 40 as the hulls are the same. The Lagoon 40 is cheaper. We also think that it's better fitted out. So value for money is a difficult one. I understand what they're trying to do here, looking for the charter market. However, does it represent good value for money or would you just go and buy Lagoon 40? We leave that choice to you, but I think I know what we would do. So value for money, we're only going to award this a four out of 10. Well, that was the XS12, part of a new range of catamarans from the Beneteau Group. Now, Let's go through this the way we normally do. We'll go through the positives and then we'll go through the any potential negatives. So, Teresa, because I'm the one that always yaps away, positives about the XS12. Well, I think that, like the Lagoons, of course, uh, internal living space is really the main um, positive <laughs> for the XS12 for what is a, what, 39 foot? 38 foot six. Th catamaran you have a huge amount of internal living yep. space and I think the, the internal living space is very livable so the layout is you know nothing groundbreaking but if it ain't broke don't fix it it works really well that kind of you know galley up open plan um, saloon galley upstairs and then downstairs you've got the owner's hull on one side presumably and then the other hull you've got an aft and a four cabin and um, the obviously the heads in between so you know there's nothing unusual about this boat I think that it is just a, a good solid entry-level uh, cruising catamaran probably uh, more suited to the charter market than the liverboard market but I'm sure that plenty of liverboards will be looking at this one as well when they look at the line look at the lineup of production catamarans okay my thoughts on it are that essentially, and we have had this from two brokers, we haven't found this from any source on the internet, we've heard it from multiple sources, so I can't uh, confirm this, but it is apparently the same hull as the Lagoon 40. Well, so, I think anyone with a set of eyes in their head yes. can tell. But it's, I know, but so they've used the same moulding. They look moulding. identical. They've used the same moulding. Yes, they're exactly for, the same. for the hull. Um, now, what they've done is they've just done a couple of things, um, and I've been through all the information. The first thing is they've moved the helm stations um, to the outboard, outboard home stations mm. and they've got this kind of sunroof thing so where you normally have a hard bimini top there is a yeah. sunroof uh, that goes in that can go in and out so yeah. it's a, like a rag top that actually wasn't present on the 12 that we saw it at a fully hard top now from a positive point of view that means that because they there is no longer a helm station you have a much bigger cockpit that cockpit is huge yeah yep and so you've got seating you know all around mm -hmm. it is a really really nice seating area and you can you know if you want sun if you're in kind of a shoulder season then it's you know you can get you can pull it all back and put sun in there yeah and then pull it back again and yeah. so from that point of view it is a really nice place to be and really if i wanted to charter somewhere warm i'd like that boat it's nice it's a nice boat mm -hmm. um so that, that's the positives um it's it's got a nice cockpit and there's a lot of internal volume i, I agree with you on that okay any anything else in the positive realm before we move on to any potential negatives well i think that um as i said this this boat is really well set up for the charter market and i think that if you look at it in that light then there are you know what would be a negative for a, a cruising couple wanting to live aboard would be a positive for um someone who wanted to buy the boat and charter it yeah so you know okay we'll get into that in a minute negatives you're gonna go <laughs> okay so, I, I'm, I'm the one that always goes ah, ah, ah. All right, off no, you go. no okay so so uh going on from that point the so the excess is a funny boat actually i can't quite 
it really, um, I found myself quite befuddled by it, actually. I agree, yeah. Because it's clearly from the same mould as uh, the Lagoon hulls. Um, literally. Yeah, literally. is, And uh, at first I couldn't work out why they would make the decisions that they've made, not least put outboard helms on what is quite clearly far from a performance catamaran. Usually outboard helms are, are associated with your performance-based catamarans. This is definitely not performance-based, but obviously Lagoon would not have wanted Beneteau to be using their hull moulds uh, if the, the boat uh, was going to be in direct competition with Lagoons. But of course, two catamarans that look identical, you have to make some changes somewhere. So I think that's where the helm positions have come yeah, from. Yeah, I think they must have had to use a different deck mould. Uh, I don't know, but... Well, they would have had to because there's no, there's no, there's no helm position. No, but the, um, the, the shape of the... Um, they may, they may have modified the deck mode, I don't know. Anyway. anyway, point being is that I cannot think of any other reason for those outboard helms apart from to differentiate it from the lagoons because yep. they don't make any sense. And I think that it must have been just Beneteau saying, well, we're going to try not to compete with lagoons, so therefore we're going to put outboard helms on what on a boat that doesn't suit outboard helms. And the funny thing is that they're almost apologetic about it because the outboard helms are so kind of ridiculously well protected that it's almost pointless having the outboard, like the, that massive structure that I don't even know what to call it. It was like a tent kind it's of a, thing. It's a cockpit enclosure. Yeah, a cockpit encl enclosure like on the out, uh, on, on the outside of, a of the hull. It, it didn't really make any sense to me. And the other thing is the slidey, the slidey bimini situation is, um, I mean, I can't imagine any liverboard wanting or needing that because most of the time, I guarantee you, you're hiding from the sun. And also you would want that space for solar panels. So that's why I think it's better for the charter market. It's you would charter, think yeah. that charterers on a week long holiday, they might like being out on, on the, in the exposed helm position, they might want to, you know, kind of get a bit of a tan on their holiday and, and fold back that sunroof thing. Um, and certainly the internal volume is there. Uh, so that's why I think that it's best for the charter market. Okay. For a liverboard, I can't imagine why you would choose the XS over the Lagoon 40. The Lagoon 40, obviously, you know, no matter what Benetton has tried to do, the comparisons with Lagoon are inevitable. And um, I personally much prefer the Lagoon over the XS, but I won't get too far into that because that obviously is a personal choice. But yeah, the XS didn't tick enough boxes for me. Okay. Um, I'm gonna yes, I agree with everything. I'm gonna add a couple of things. Yeah. Those helm stations. Um, we've both shown our reservations for outboard helms. Yeah. I think I can see the benefit on something like an Outremer, the kind of semi outboard or the half in on the on the sea wind, and we've seen them on the Katana and I think that and the Naughty Tech. Yeah. I think for long passage making they're they're a no no, and yeah. this really is, as I said, it's like putting a, a you know a spoiler on a bathtub. Yeah. And. Yeah. You know, I looked at the excess brochure. I actually went and did some, you know, some my research. You actually went and did some research. I did the research, <laughs> and uh, Benito are using a lot of kind of like words like the experience or you know the cruise, you know the the racing the racing position for the cruiser or, or whatever. When you dig into this, and I've literally, you look back on the video, I've put up the specifications for the Lagoon 40 and the, the XS12, it's exactly the same. Mm. So it's the same hull, it's the same mainsail uh, area, mm. same rig height, mm. same weight. So it essentially, it will perform exactly the same as the Lagoon 40. Well, this is why the, the choice of the open helms doesn't make any sense unless Lagoon obviously yeah. said, you know, you need to make it not a Lagoon. We'll so, give you our moulds, yes, but you can't make it exactly. not a Lagoon. Surely it would sort of taken the L of them put in. <laughs> an S on the front of it and go calling it a slagoon or like a, <laughs> the slagoon 40 by Benetton. Yeah, it's a slagoon. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, okay. so, so personally, outboard helms, I didn't like them. No. Um, I can see them not on that boat. Secondly, that soft top, as you've correctly identified, uh, for a liverboard, that's where solar, pan solar panels go. And the other thing about that rag top is it's something to go wrong. Yeah, so, and it will probably degrade in time. I mean, presumably it's made of some umbrella or something. It'll be some umbrella, but it will. But it, like the stitching will yeah. go like all, anything all else. The, so that's yeah. the second thing. 
the other thing about that is, it, it, the interior fit out is inferior to the Lagoon 40. Yes, exactly. So, and there are things. I'm um, obviously you can change things around, and you can have different, you know, different furniture and you know different wood finishes. But really, you go on that. There's there, the thing that really struck me about that. There was zero wow factor. Yeah. Zero. Like even right until the Lagoon 40. The Lagoon 40. And this is the. the I know we keep banging about Lagoon 40, the lagoons, but that's the comparison. Yeah. They are. They're the same mold. Yeah. Even the Lagoon 40, you go onto it and it's like, okay, I can see, I can see what they've done there. They've changed the woods, they've got that, now, that nice mahogany finish, you can still get the light finish, and you just. It think, feels quite, the Lagoons feel quite yeah. luxurious. They're obviously, they're a production cat and, you know, they have to keep their costs under control, but you can tell that whoever's in charge of the interior fit out is putting effort into making it look and feel as, as luxurious as is possible. Yeah, and really, you know, but that, the thing that really bugged me about that is the, the interior, the works, the kitchen work surface. I know it's a small thing, but really, that kitchen work surface, I have never seen a kitchen work surface as bad on a boat. Mm -hmm. As in, of such poor... You know, it's so cheap. Yeah. And literally, it must have cost what? It must have cost... Say, say arbitrarily, that kit, that amount of... of uh, melamine or chipboard covered it must have cost 20 bucks right mm. for 50 bucks or 100 bucks they could have put Corian in yeah. why not just get a bit of Corian and just just put some love into what you're doing there was there was no love I think that's the thing there that's was, it there's no yeah, love in that yeah. even Lagoon you can say well it's built to a price point but they still you cannot. You can see where a designer said yeah we'll do but that even, but even like Fontaine Peugeot I would say that Fontaine Peugeot the, the quality of the internal um, finish was not the highest but even they uh, there's definitely a big nod to design that the internal um, finish uh, looks from a step back really stylish it's stylish yep. very stylish and to me the excess wasn't stylish it wasn't the fit out wasn't very good yeah and the final kick in the ass on this it's 30 grand more expensive than we're going for yeah, see this is what I don't get I mean like at what point do you go well it doesn't it's the same boat it looks a bit different you get outboard helm stations and it's 30 grand more expensive I I I, I I think, I think Benito had a real opportunity to do something different, and they have, but I, I, I don't see where it is, and to tell you the truth, if I had to go and charter something, mm -hmm. while I'd happily take that for charter, probably I'd take a Fontaine Pajot, because they're really stylish inside, yeah, yeah. and you know, you haven't got to deal with the maintenance, yeah. or a Lagoon, or a Naughty Tech, or you know, but that I or, just, or a leopard, or a leopard with the forward facing cockpit. Exactly. You know the charter. You know your options are limitless when it comes to charter boats. I don't see what Benito are like where in the market they're hoping to go. So well, there you go. So anyway, that is uh, that was the XS12 by Benito. Um, obviously, um, we. Um, would like to hear your comments so yeah. comment on what you think for what you've seen from you know either boat shows or seeing it yourself secondly um, the reviews um, we have the app that's going great guns now we have so many um, so many of your own review scores there's a link down below so if you please just click on it put your own scores in and it kind of like it feeds in so what you end up getting is a, a review score that is averaged out and is based on um, what you think not what brokers want to tell you so that's kind of good for you and other, other sailors mm. and we will be back again we've got a lot more reviews coming up so there's uh, you know there's the Maverick there's the Antares there's the nice X, X5 the exquisite X5 yes, yes. Of course, and, and many more so uh, feel free to subscribe and we'll be back soon with another video thank you bye bye